Good morning, girls. We are in continuation of our chapter number fifteen, light, and today we will study about the different kind of spherical mirrors. The mirrors can be plane mirrors as well as spherical mirrors. Spherical means which have a curved surface. Okay. Now the curved surfaces also like spoon, steel vessels. They have curved surfaces, but they also show the reflection. Okay. The light gets reflected from. those surfaces also so we will study in detail about the spherical mirrors spherical means which have a curved surface so about we will study about the two kinds of spherical mirrors one is a concave mirror one is a convex mirror what is a concave mirror concave mirror is a mirror in which the reflecting side is the inner side that means here this is a kind of a this is a mirror spherical uh, spherical mirror curved surface mirror here the reflecting side is the inner side that means if the light falls here it will not get reflected back light has to fall on this side then only it will get reflected okay now it is also called converging mirror why because the light after the reflection when the light falls on this falls on this then it gets reflected back and when it gets reflected back it meets at a point it converges at a point so it is called converging mirror is that clear see how it it happens this is a uh, this is a spherical mirror okay concave mirror the light falls here light goes here and it gets bounced back it goes like this then light comes here also again it goes back and come like this then light comes here also and it goes back like this and it meets at a point right so after the reflection the light it meets the rays of the light they meet at a point or they converge at a point that's why it is called converging mirror second is a convex mirror convex mirror is a mirror where the reflecting side is the outer side that means this side is the reflecting side not the inner one okay and what happens when the rays of light they fall on this they diverge that means they do not they spread out they do not meet at one place right that's why it is also called diverging mirror but what happens when the rays they get diverted that means they get diverged they get spread out they appear to meet on the back side of the mirror they are not meeting in the real in the real they are spreading spreading out but they appear to meet at a point inside the mirror okay and they will meet here the image will be formed image will be formed here also image will be formed here also but the different kind of images are formed in both the cases we will study about that just now you have to remember that this is the convex mirror where the reflecting side is the outer side and the rays after reflecting they diverge they spread out that's why it is also called diverging mirror right now what we will do here we will study one experiment the activity to show that the parallel beam of light after reflection from a concave mirror converges at a single point in front of the mirror so what you will do we will take a concave mirror and a sheet of paper right so what we have done we have taken a concave mirror in concave mirror the inner side is the reflecting side so we have taken this mirror and a sheet of paper we will hold these two in our hands in what position we will hold we will hold the mirror in such a way that the sun's light is falling on the reflecting side which is the reflecting side the inner side so we will hold it in such a way that the light will fall on the inner side the inner side is facing the sun okay and we will hold the a uh, sheet of paper in the other hand in such a way that what will happen after the reflection of the light this uh, from this mirror the light will be reflected on the on the paper when it goes back here so we will hold the paper in such a way that the light will fall back on this is that clear light will first fall on the glass on the spherical mirror and after that we will hold the mirror the sheet of paper in such a way that the light will bounce back and it will fall on this uh, sheet of paper now what we will do 
again it is uh, uh, told here hold the concave mirror in your hand so that the reflecting side of the mirror faces the sun the inner side faces the sun hold the paper in the other hand such that it faces the mirror okay adjust its position such that a clear single spot of light is formed on the paper see girls what you have to do we ensure that the sunlight is not falling on the paper it is in the front of the mirror and from the mirror the light is getting formed or a spot of light is getting formed on the sheet of paper what happens after sometimes you will find that the paper starts burning if you keep the mirror in this position for some time how come it starts burning because the ray of the sun which is having heat also inside it it is getting reflected back and it is getting converged converged means it is meeting at a point on the sheet of paper when it is hold like it is held like this for some uh, period of time for maybe some few minutes or something then the continuous reflection of the light it will start it will make the paper burn okay this shows that the parallel beam of light after deflection from a concave mirror converges at a single point okay now what we will do now there is an, another activity for here we will use the two different kinds of mirrors the concave mirror on one time and the convex mirror now uh, what is the procedure we take uh, light a candle and fix it on the candle stand we have taken a candle we have fixed it here place a white screen near the candle okay we have put a white screen near the candle keep the concave mirror in front of the candle this concave mirror should be in front of the candle here so that its rays falls on the concave mirror right then uh, keep the concave mirror in front of the candle and the screen okay it is between the screen and the candle adjust the position of the mirror so that a clear image of the candle is formed on the screen why uh, see how come the image of the candle will be formed here image of the candle will be formed here why because this candle is going the beam of the light is going at the concave mirror and from here it is reflected back and so the this candle image will be formed on the sheet right now keep the mirror a little close to the candle we will keep on changing the position of the concave mirror we will bring it near to the candle then we will see what will happen to the screen then what is there it will if we take it away then we will see what is happening with the screen same thing what you will do you will put a convex mirror and you will try both the cases once you will put take it near to the candle and the other time you will take away from the candle from this what are the inferences that we have derived the inferences that we have derived is in the case of the concave mirror now this table is very important you have to learn this table in the uh, what happens in the concave mirror when it is close to the mirror a real image is formed invert which is inverted and magnified magnified means which is larger than the object when it is very close to the mirror then the image becomes virtual okay virtual mean that is not real that is appearing to meet that is not a real image but image is there okay and it is erect also and it is magnified when it is away from the mirror then a real image will be formed it will be inverted and it will be diminished diminished means smaller in size what happens in the convex mirror when it is close to the mirror and away from the mirror here we will do two cases only why because in convex mirror what is happening in convex mirror the rays are diverging they are diverging and they appear to meet at a point right so that means in both the cases when it is close to the mirror or it is away from the mirror in both the cases virtual image is being formed virtual means which is not real okay because the rays are appearing to meet at a point so the image is not real and it will be erect because virtual image is always erect and in both the cases it is diminished that means it is smaller in size so you have to learn this table after that we come to the use of spherical mirrors where these mirrors are used okay so first the concave mirrors concave mirrors of large focal lengths are used in the shaving mirrors in the shaving mirrors because they give a magnified 
when we go close to the mirror we see the magnified image when we uh, when a person shaves he uses that shaving mirror so that he can see the minute details of his bed or his face okay because it is giving a magnified image concave mirrors are used as reflectors in headlights of vehicles searchlights etc concave and convex mirrors are used in reflecting reflection telescopes concave mirrors are used in devices such as solar cookers why are they used in solar cookers abhi we did this activity where in the concave mirror was used and the sheet of paper it started burning why because the rays of the light from the sun they were they were uh, going they were falling on the concave mirror and from the concave mirror they were actually meeting at a point on a sheet of paper they were actually meeting they were converging right so what was happening the sun's rays they were actually meeting here so the focus of the sun or the heat of the sun or the reflection of the sun was actually being formed here so it was so uh, it is so uh, heated up that the even the paper starts burning so that's why we use them in the solar cookers so that what happens when the sun rays they fall on them on the solar cookers they will absorb they uh, they will appear they will meet at a particular point and the uh, intensity of the sun rays will be maximum so they will be able to use the sun rays to cook food or to do some other things right now what are the use of convex mirrors convex mirrors are used in buses to help the driver see the whole bus why because it gives a diminished image it is giving a smaller image than the object so when they are used in the buses or in the vehicles also as a rear view in the vehicles what we can see with the vehicle which is at the back we can see the whole vehicle in that mirror because it will give a smaller image so we can see the whole vehicle we can know oh the bus is coming at the back so we have to be careful then convex mirrors are used as field view mirrors in supermarkets as they cover a wide range of vision they are also used in the supermarket to see that they can see the whole market at in our know, glance right now this portion girls this lenses is all cut we are not going to do this in this class you will study about them in the uh, advanced classes in the class 8 so this whole chap till here it is all cut all this is cut till page number 208 Starting from lenses to page two hundred and eight, is the all cut. But you will use the you will learn the uses of convex and con concave lenses. Just remember them. The convex lenses. See, girls, what happens? The mirrors and the lens they in the they actually act opposite to each other. Concave mirror. Concave mirror. In the concave mirror, what was the reflecting side? The inner side. and they were converging the rays were converging now what happens when uh, in the concave convex mirror what happens here here is a convex mirror because here two mirrors they combine together to form convex lens clear and here what is happening here these are the two convex mirrors they are combining together to form convex sorry these are concave lens and these are convex lens reverse thing happens right so convex lens are these and concave lens are these convex lenses are used as magnifying glasses convex and concave lenses are used for correcting defects to the eye concave lens is used as a peep hole convex and concave lenses are used for cameras and projectors and convex and concave lenses are used in binoculars telescopes and microscopes right so here uh we will not do the lenses 
part we will only do the uses of convex and concave lenses you have to learn that mirrors i have explained you the two type of spherical mirrors a concave mirror and the convex mirror now we come to the dispersion of light what do you mean by dispersion of light see the white light or the simple sunlight which is white in color it consists of seven colors right when we make the white light pass through a through a prism through a glass prism it splits into seven colors we can see all the seven colors right and this splitting of the white light into seven colors is called dispersion dispersion means splitting into seven colors and this range of seven colors this whole range of seven colors is called spectrum okay you can see here in this there is a white light which is going through the prism and it gets di uh, dispersed into seven colors the vibgyor as you can see in the rainbow also so it is called the spectrum this whole seven colors they are combined together they are called spectrum now what happens in the rainbows uh, how can you see that uh, rainbow in the sky what is happening there is a the sunlight over there okay and still there are water droplets in the air so these water droplets they act as a prism so when the white light or the sunlight it passes through these water droplets it gets split or it gets dispersed into seven colors and those seven colors you can see as a rainbow in the sky is that clear now there uh, the question is suppose this prism is used to split a white light into the seven colors now can those seven colors be again combined yes what you do you put two prisms in front of each other okay when the light will pass through one prism it will split into seven colors and when these seven colors will go through the another prism it will come out as a white light it will combine together and it will be formed as a white light you can see here now newton's disk what is newton disk newton disk can also be used to show how the seven colors can again be combined to form a white color it is a disk which is containing seven colors the area of the disk is divided into seven equal parts and each part is colored using each of seven colors okay there is a disk which is divided into seven equal parts and each part is colored into seven color if you rotate the disk if you rotate it in a very high speed then it appears white in color so all the colors they merge together they combine together to form white color right so with this girls we come to an end of this uh, chapter i will send you the book questions here the short exercise questions and the short and the long answers i will send you in the next session i hope everything is clear to you